Hello everybody, Kristen Brown here, curl specialist and colorist, and today we are definitely going for loud, bold color, okay? I'm talking a major transformation on my model slash client here, and the main thing that I really wanna showcase is how you can go big while still keeping in your comfort zone, both as a professional as well as with your client, and also keep the integrity of the curly hair, okay? So without further ado, let's get right into it. So how we're gonna start this amazing process is obviously by working as clean as possible. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is section and my client's hair is dry, so no need to get the hair wet or mist it down for any type of clean parting, don't worry about that. Just try to get it as clean as you can. Now the way that I like to work as well is not just do it on the, like, the left side or the right side, I like to split it into four quadrants. So make sure that you are separating the amount of hair that you can comfortably work with. A lot of times clients will think that they need to come in with super clean hair and so they wash their hair the night before, they'll scrub it down and Obviously, as colorists, we know that that can also put us into a sticky situation because their scalps become increasingly more sensitive. So be sure to work as gently as you can to not further irritate your client's scalp. One thing that I also did is I already went ahead and applied a color protector barrier around her whole hairline. A lot of people tend to be a lot more porous around their hairline for a multitude of reasons. Maybe they used a face wash that was a little bit exfoliating, maybe they're a little bit drier around the hairline. Um, product buildup can also kind of build up in those zones. So I like to protect the hairline just so that way their scalp is not grabbing all of that color the moment that you apply it. So here we are, we have our four sections. We have our top right, our top left, and then our two back sections. The way that I'm going to start with this process is I'm going to apply my base color first and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So the way that I like to apply my base color is to be liberal. Make sure that you're definitely smashing in a nice amount at the base. What you wanna do is get it as saturated as possible. So I like to get my brush kinda dialed in as much as I can. Still keep it nice and clean, but also make sure that you load your brush up. Sometimes I think we also can be a little bit hesitant with doing a full base change and we don't saturate the hair as much as we think. So we're trying to make color last, we're trying to not use as much, but sometimes I feel like that could push you into the zone of it not being enough or you have spots or you have parts that you kind of left out. So make sure that you're taking your time you're going through, you're covering every hair that goes for those little guys at the hairline as well, and saturate. Remember, your client's gonna wear their hair in a multiple amount of different ways, so you wanna be sure that we're saturating enough. Next what I'm gonna do is start to go through and really work it down. So I'm just working on this one section right now. I'm probably doing her base maybe like the first two and a half inches. Remember, curly hair definitely is longer than what we think. Even when the hair is a little bit more in a relaxed state like this, her hair gets much curlier than this. So we wanna make sure that we are definitely accounting for that recoil. Sometimes curly hair lays a little bit flatter. It could be denser, it could be finer. So make sure that you are definitely working into all those sections. So if you notice, I'm just using the tip of my brush to navigate through my client's hair. I'm not using a comb. And I think a lot of times we naturally assume that you need a comb for everything. Most of the time when I'm sectioning, and if you remember in the beginning, I just used my fingers. It does not have to be absolutely 100% precise, especially when it comes to curly hair because curls move, they do what they want. They really don't listen to anyone but themselves. So we really do wanna be mindful of the way that we treat our client's hair. Especially when it comes to curly hair, like I said, you definitely want to keep the integrity. You don't want to upset the hair too much. And I find that using my fingers is a much more delicate way of sectioning. A cool little tip that could save you potentially a nice amount of time is really get both sides of the hair area. So what you're gonna see me do is load up my brush and kind of smash not only the side that I'm working on, but the previous. What this does, this really does ensure that you've covered enough. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this next section down. Again, make sure that your partings are 
easy to work with, that they're not too thick, that they're nice and bite-sized. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this side over. Remember, I just applied product right here. I'm gonna flip this side over, and now I'm gonna go ahead and apply on both. This really does make sure that the section, even if I did grab it a little bit too thick, that there's product on this side as well. Not only can this save you time, but sometimes I feel like we have to go back in afterward and resaturate just to make sure we didn't miss any spots. And this could potentially be a really great way. This is the way that I actually touch up a lot of my clients' roots. If they're coming in for a root touch up, you could typically bang out roots in probably 10 minutes by doing it this way. So give it a shot, see if you like it, but I definitely find that it's helpful. So as you can see, I am working now on my back sections. I definitely start at the top, that way it makes it easier for you to section the hair out and away from what you're working on. Sometimes we can get a little pigeonholed into uh, a position, so don't be afraid to take a clip, have it up here, clip the hair out of the way so that way you can work nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and continue all the way down, finish my last zone, and then when we come back, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do from there. So I'm all completed with my root color. Remember we started in this zone and then I went ahead and did both my front sides. Then I went ahead and finished in the back. So now that we're all fully saturated, I already did like a little wipe up top just to see the color and it's fabulous. So now I'm ready to move on to my next zone, which essentially is off the roots about three inches, mid lengths all the way through to the ends. I haven't mentioned this yet, but my client has virgin hair, which makes a huge difference. So this is why I really don't have to worry about going in and pre-lightening. I'm able to lift her hair effectively and efficiently with color. So in this case, the way I'm going to apply this onto my client's hair is I love using my hand as my palette board. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my hand right here. I'm going to press the color into her hair and also into my hand. This is gonna ensure that nice saturation. I can actually feel the coolness of the color on my hand, so I really do know that I'm able to get the color all the way through, which is super important. You can either take your hands like this, kind of run it through. Be careful to not remove any product. I think sometimes we can press a little bit too hard and we wind up leaving splotches onto the hair. So make sure that it's coated. One thing that I also really enjoy is this nice marriage between the root color and my next color. What you could do afterward is kind of soften that by taking your fingers and kind of rubbing it together. I'm not gonna do that right now because the idea is I really wanna get this mid to ends color on while ensuring full saturation. Sometimes naturally a client's hair can be lighter toward the ends because the ends of the hair is the oldest part, but still make sure that you're pulling it all the way through. And because this isn't lightener, I really can apply it on my first piece and then flop it over. Sometimes you're even able to see on the other side the spots that you've missed. So this is a good time to really go back in and to apply and then soften with your hands. That's the best part about us being artists again is that we are using our hands. Our hands are telling us what to do, what our next steps are, so make sure that you are listening. Something that I learned along the way is if you go side to side, you're really able to get all those pieces in between that sometimes get forgotten. So if you're used to going downward, that's fine, but also sometimes hit it back and forth in a sweeping motion, and that will really help ensure that you've saturated everything. Because I'm working with color and I'm not working with a lightener, I don't have to worry about the pieces that I'm laying on the opposite side of her head. This is gonna allow for me to work from the top down and relatively move a little bit faster. So as I'm bringing these pieces down, because now I'm gonna jump over to the other side of her head, I'm actually taking my time right now to kind of soften and blur that line between the root color as well as what I just applied. This is gonna make it a lot easier so that way you don't feel the need to go back and do this later, which is gonna make it a little bit more difficult for you to navigate through the hair because there is product on it. So as you're bringing down these pieces, take your time, use your fingers, and kind of make a scissoring motion in between the two different zones, just to blur the line a little bit, and then lay it down accordingly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and jump on over to the other side once I'm done with these last top pieces and then we'll get started on the back after that, and I'll show you guys the steps to follow. So right now I'm working literally on my last pieces in the front. This is still really important because I think this is where you really get to see 
your base color come through. You also get to see if you missed any spots. So that's why I'm telling you to really take your time. Be sure to stay really vigilant on the work that you did previously as well as what you're currently working on. After I'm done with these last two sections, I'm gonna go ahead and bring everything back over. We're gonna do that same smoothing technique and just to show you again, the smoothing technique is blurring the lines between your base color as well as your mid through your ends. So it's taking your fingers, applying a little bit of pressure, scissoring between the two, so that way you have a really nice blend. And then I kind of like to do this motion with my thumbs, again, applying a little bit of pressure, but that first blur is really gonna make the graduation of the color absolutely seamless. So after I'm done with this last section, I'm gonna go ahead and bring all this down, do the blurring technique, and then we'll go ahead and start on the back and we'll circle back on that when I am done. So right now, the way that I'm tackling the back half of my client's head is I'm actually working the whole way down. The reason I'm working in this direction is that I really want for everything to kind of catch up at the same time. What I'm doing is, let's say for example, I'm on her left side. I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece, do what we've been normally doing, painting all the way down. Again, remember that saturation is important. So I know that you may blow through a little bit more product than what you expected, but it just means that the color is just going to be that much more rich and thorough. Instead of taking this piece and dropping it, because I can't bring it down in front of her face because that's dangerous, what I'm going to do is actually cross it over and flip it onto her right side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side and I'm gonna take this piece and then flip it up and over to her left side. So you're kinda gonna have this crisscross X that essentially is happening at the top. That way you can continue to work very, very clean. You can work very, very smart that way and you can tackle the whole back half of the head all as one zone. So from here, we're gonna take it all the way down to the very, very bottom. I'm super excited. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice because again, I'm just really looking forward to having a nice little switch up, a nice little change on my client here. And I think she's ready too. So we are all finished. I'm just gonna do a quick little pull apart, make sure that everything is coated. Go ahead and grab this section. You could drop this directly down, so that's fine. Drop this directly down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let my client process for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and then we will come back, we will rinse, and we'll continue from there. All right guys, so here we are. We let her go ahead and sit for the full 45 minutes, and as you can see, you can really start to see that big change. This color is looking absolutely incredible. I don't think I could have planned for a, a better result. A way for you to check your color is just to go ahead and kind of pull off a little bit and then slightly bump it up just on your finger. And if you kind of turn your finger to the side, you can really see the way that the light catches the color. So we're definitely good. We are ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and take her to the bowl and fully rinse her out. All right, so here we are. She is washed, conditioned. I put a little bit of product in it, just barely, um, so that way I can speak while we are going through her curls. And one thing to remember is from here down, it definitely has that darkening effect. You need to remember that curly hair tends to be nice and dense. So when the hair is wet, sometimes it looks a little bit deceiving, but I promise you it's not. If you are concerned at all, you can always take a piece of hair, towel blot it a little bit, that way you can actually see the true color. I've done that in the back so that way you can actually kind of see the difference. And if you take a look, you can definitely see the difference between doing a light towel dry versus something down here which has all of the water. So don't be afraid, don't be fooled, trust your process and trust your formulations. And here in a little bit, what I'm going to do is put all my stylers into her curly hair. Then we're going to infuse. It's gonna be amazing. You're gonna see this color really, really come to life. So um, let's go ahead and start our styling process. 
So right now, the first thing that I really love to do when it comes to curly hair, no matter what you are choosing to style with, is just to get a leave-in conditioner into the hair. Um, leave-in conditioners do an incredible job of providing extra hydration, extra moisturization, and the key with curly hair is we're not gonna do our hair every day because that will continue to dry our hair out furthermore. So by putting a great baseline leave-in conditioner, um, it really can help to hydrate the hair throughout the week. What I'm doing right now is I'm starting on her right side and I'm just layering. I'm starting with a spray leave-in that I'm actually rubbing through my hands. I'm sectioning and then I am dragging it through her hair. Now the point of doing that is so that way we're getting it from root to tip. Sometimes with just doing a spray, you're misting it in, but what I'm doing is really making sure that we are getting it fully covered. And that's why having really wet hair when applying onto curly hair is going to be your best friend. You need a nice amount of water and styling products to make the hair not only touchable, but also keeping a lot of the moisture balanced inside of the hair. So I'm running it through just like this. So sometimes the hair needs to wake up a little bit after smoothing. So run it through the hair. You can kind of give it a little shake like that. You can let it drop. You can then let it kind of noodle in your hands, give it a good scrunch, and then let it sit. This is gonna provide excellent foundation and lift for later on when I start to diffuse her hair. So I'm gonna apply leave-in conditioner all throughout. Then I'm going to go on top of all of this with a gel. So that way we're really locking in that definition for the week. Here is the exact transformation that we were looking for. We have our very bold, but also subtle, very transformative, but also natural. And this is something that I absolutely love doing with clients when they have virgin hair, because you can always go up from here. In this case, what I wanted to do was give her something that was bold, like I said, and natural, but let's say you wanted to kick it up. Let's say your client was like, this looks great, but how can we add dimension on top of this? What you can do is also do a highlight directly on top of this, if your client's hair is able to take an additional process. In this case, we were more than happy with this. My client loves it. Do you love it? Okay, good, good, it's confirmed. <laughs> so I made sure to pump in a ton of hydration by using creams. I also made sure to use a gel, so that way we were locking in that definition. And this is going to be a style that she can literally rock all week. So I can't stress that enough. Really make sure that when your curly client is leaving the salon, they're leaving hydrated, they're leaving bouncy, and they're leaving looking very far on the other opposite end of dehydrated, okay? So here we go. I hope you guys liked it. Please go ahead and like, make sure you subscribe. And also, what do you wanna see? I know you wanna see some curly education, so let me know in the comments below, okay? Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.